Hello, friends. We are going to continue our read aloud of the kids in Miss Coleman's class, Snow War. We read the first three chapters yesterday, and we are following Mr. Ian, who um, is wrapping up his Christmas break and just returning to school. And he is reading a science fiction book, They Came From Beyond that he is very interested in and was having a hard time paying attention in class until his teacher, Miss Coleman, started talking about their winter festival that they were going to have. And the theme of the class booth was going to be fortune teller. So let's continue with chapter four, recess. By lunchtime, Ian was thinking about the Xers again. He just had to know if they were going to be able to blast off and if they would reach the fourth planet from their sun. So he stuck, they came from beyond, into his pocket before he left for the cafeteria. At lunch, Chris said, Ian, sit here. Ian carried his tray to the table where the boys in his class were sitting. There were only six boys in Miss Coleman's class, six boys and 10 girls. This was not fair, thought Ian. He wished it were the other way around, 10 boys and six girls, but it was not, so the boys stuck together. Want to see what we were looking at in the paper bag this morning? Chris asked Ian. Ian did, but even more, he wanted to find out how the Xers were doing. He did not want to be rude though, so he said, sure. Bobby pulled out the bag. Go ahead, look inside, he said, but do not take it out. Ian looked inside. Cool, an ant farm, he said softly. It is a miniature one, said Bobby. I got it for Christmas, but we cannot let Miss Coleman see it. Do you know what an ant farm is? It's a little piece of plastic, or in this case, it's a little piece, sometimes they're barely big. A little piece of plastic with some dirt in it and some ants, and they tunnel through the dirt just like they would outside, but it's in clear glass. You can see what they're doing. No, agreed Ian. That would not be a good idea. When the boys had finished their lunches, Omar jumped up. Okay, let's go outside now, he said. Yeah, let's throw snowballs, said Ricky. Are the ants coming outside? Asked Ian. Hmm, said Bobby. I do not want them to get cold. I will keep them warm for you, offered Ian. I could put the bag under my coat. Then I could just, you know, read or something. So I would not bother the ants. Really, said Bobby. Okay, cool. Yes, thought Ian. He took the paper bag and carefully zipped it inside his coat. Then he went outside. He headed for a big rock under a tree at the edge of the playground. Just as he had hoped, there was no snow on the rock. It had melted away, and the rock was warm from the sun. Ian hopped onto the rock. He leaned against the tree. For a moment, he looked out at the playground, at the swings and monkey bars and slides at the playing field, which is now covered with snow, and at the hill that sloped gently into the far end of the playground. Then, with a happy sigh, he pulled out, They came from beyond. He began to read. The rest of the kids in Miss Coleman's class played in the snow. They built snowmen and snowwomen and snow cats and snow dogs. They even built a snow teacher. Ian, come help us, yelled Hank. I can't, Ian called back. I have to keep the ants warm. Oh, yeah, said Hank. But Ian heard Ricky say, he just wants to read. That's all he does now read. He is a brain, added Leslie. Hey, brain, don't you want to build a snow fort, called Hank. Put the ants in your pocket. No, thanks, called Ian. Ian's classmates all decided to build snow forts. They began three of them. By the time recess ended, the forts had just been started, but Ian could tell they were going to be very wonderful. Chapter five, Hurt hurtling through space. That evening, snow began to fall. Ian went to his room after supper. He looked out his window and watched the snow in the light of a street lamp. He tried not to feel too excited. Ian lay on his bed. He wiggled his loose tooth with his tongue. I know many of you who do that. He read, they came from beyond. Ian called his father. Are you doing your homework? Um... Yes, said Ian. Ian stuffed the book under his pillow. Then he found his spelling list. He studied it. When he thought he knew how to spell every word on it, he put it away. He took out his book again. 
The Xers were now hurtling through space. Hurtling through space, Ian said to himself. Hmm, what does that mean? Ian carried the book across the hall to Chip's room. Chip, he said, what does hurtling through space mean? Chip grinned. It means barfing. Barfing while you travel. Oh no, wait, that would be hurling through space. Very funny, said Ian. He took the book downstairs. Mom, what does hurtling through space mean? He asked. Well, it means speeding through space, she said, rushing through, going so fast it would be hard to stop. Oh, cool, said Ian, thanks. Ian wished he could hurtle through space himself. That would be pretty cool. The last thing Ian did before he fell asleep was look out his window. The snow was still falling. Ian crossed his fingers. The first thing Ian did when he woke up the next morning was look out his window. The snow had stopped falling. Two or three inches were on the ground. Ian turned on his radio. Not a single school was closed. Oh, barf, said Ian. Ian walked into his classroom that day reading. They came from beyond. Hi, Brian. No, hi, Brain, called the kids. Ian did not mind. And when it was time for recess, he headed straight for the rock, even though he did not have an ant farm that needed to be kept warm. While Ian read about the Xers, the rest of the kids worked on the snow forts they had begun the day before. The boys, Bobby, Chris, Omar, Ricky, and Hank worked on one. Karen, Hanny, Nancy, Sarah, and Natalie worked on another. Leslie, Janie, Audrey, Tammy, and Terry worked on the third. Every now and then, Ian looked up from his book and admired the forts. The boys' fort looked a little like an igloo. It curved upward, but they could not figure out how to keep the top one. The fort that Karen and her friends were building looked like a castle. The fort the other girls were building looked like a tiny house. The girls had even made windows in it and carved out a doorway. Excellent fort, Ian said to Chris as he walked by the igloo later. Recess was ending. The kids would have to wait until Wednesday to work on their forts again. Thanks, Brain, replied Chris. Don't you want to help us with it? Ian shook his head. Not while the Xers are still hurtling through space. What? Never mind. Come on. I'll race you to the door. We'll continue tomorrow with chapter six, Snowflakes.